What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Wednesday. We are back with the one, the only, grocery store Trent. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hello, I, Trent. Hello. Um, I'm hello? very excited to be back. I really do miss the show when I don't do it. <laughs> we really miss it. Like, I too. genuinely, like, I just, I, the then I, when I, when I watched it on the road and, and we're doing whatever we're doing for the golf stuff, and then I don't get to really talk about it with anybody because none of those guys watch. No, no. And they're always just, they're always going to dinner and I'm always racing <laughs> off to some streaming device or some TV. Yeah. And then once it's over, I'm just like, all right, now I don't get to talk about it with anybody. I just mm. have to tweet about it and then that's it. So... It is very, very nice to be back in here with you guys so we can recap it does, the episode. It, it feels like we are missing someone when Ray and I just do it by ourselves. It really does. Because we are missing somebody. Yeah, no, I know. Trent. I know. And it doesn't feel right, but it feels right now. It definitely does. How was how was the Ryder Cup? Yeah, Trent? Why don't you talk to us about that for a second. The Ryder Cup was great. We yeah. had a, we were there all week. Um, it, the atmosphere there is insane. Like, yeah. It's the, the first tee is this huge grandstand. And for anybody that doesn't know, the Ryder Cup is Team USA versus Team Europe in golf. And all the best golfers Happens every two years, every two years. And all the best golfers from those countries, they go up against each other in this whole weekend thing. But it's basically a huge party. Yeah. Where people just get hammered yep. and they watch this, you know, they're they're very patriotic about everything that's going on. And there's this huge first tee on the grandstand. People are going nuts. Frankie and I ran to it the other day and we very got these great video. seats. Thank you. Yeah. We got these great seats. But the whole thing is just great. Like the atmosphere was just unmatched. A top five sporting event for sure. For any I really want to go. Yeah, you and, should. And um it, the Americans really just absolutely killed them. It wasn't it wasn't even close. Oh, they dominated. I did watch a lot this week, a lot of it because I do love the Ryder Cup. It's very entertaining. In 2025, it is going to be at Bethpage Black. Yeah, out on I'm Long more Island. interested in 2023. It's going to be in Rome. <laughs> you could go to that one too. Yeah, let's well, go. To why Italy. don't you guys just go fucking golf and I'll just watch The Bachelor? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I told you and Frankie this today. Uh, there's nothing I love more than following along with you and Frankie when you guys are on the road together. Love. <laughs> because it just seems like love. you guys are always up to some funny shenanigans. You guys would make a great, like, uh, buddy, buddy sitcom. Buddy cop yeah. movie. We have a really good time. When we go on the road, we just, we have a really good time. We yeah. go out to dinner. We run to the first tee at the Ryder Cup. We do all a bunch of stupid shit, but it's really fun. It's good. really fun. He's and a good just, And it was, where were you, Wisconsin? Yeah, Sheboygan, yeah. Wisconsin. Sheboygan. That's a great name for a, like a place in Wisconsin. It was awesome. Just fits. It's right on Lake Michigan. The views were crazy. Beautiful. How's Wisconsin as a place? I love it because I'm from the Midwest, so mm. it's very similar to where I'm from. Just even driving in from the Milwaukee airport, we had to drive like an hour. And I'm it looks to think if I've ever been. very similar to, the, to the yeah. Iowa landscape. A lot of corn, a lot of fields, really, really wide corn. open but the sunsets are beautiful. The whole place That's is great. Beautiful. Well, we're great glad food. that you had a nice time. We Thank did you. miss you. I, I do like to mix it in a little bit because I think it's funny because we just always joke. Like For the people who maybe just listen to Chicks in the Office or just listen to the Bachelor content and don't really dabble in as much Barstool stuff, and when we come on and we're just like, Trent said some golf thing. Like, <laughs> it's not, like can't believe he's doing that. It's all like all very cool <laughs> and, yeah. and important. objectively super cool uh and foreplay is you know the biggest millennial golf podcast which we do love to brag about around here and you yeah. guys did like it was really cool hey good for you and Thank i personally you. like <laughs> i you. do enjoy watching uh golf mostly on sundays before that i don't really care but sure. uh the Ryder Cup just seems so cool. It's so cool. It's it's like yeah. it's a team event. That, that's just something that doesn't and ever it, happen it in golf. It gives the golfers personalities, which right. you, like you actually get to see like these guys joke and be funny and like have fun together and like chug beers on the while they're playing golf. Right, like Justin Thomas and Daniel Berger chug yeah. beers on the first tee on fr uh, yeah, on Saturday. Awesome. Yeah, that's and they awesome. just you don't do that at a normal golf event. You so the whole thing was very don't. cool. It was very cool to be there. But again, I'm very happy to be here talking oh, about this. You know show. what I'm chugging? <laughs> Whoa. Water. I need some of that. Wow. This is the hydro jug, folks. You got to get yourself one. I just put it on the table so if you're watching, you can see it. But the hydro jug is this massive water bottle. It holds more than half a gallon of water. And you can carry it around with you all day. So you're not constantly going back and forth to fill your water bottle all the time. You just do this right in the morning. Takes you through the whole day. Mine is obviously purple, but you can pick all your colors. They do have other colors um i which personally are great. have a white a white one with a cheetah print sleeve 
You do. Nice. Yes. You do, which is which is nice. Um, the hydro jug and it's it's you know it's durable and it has these sleeves. The mine's floral, as you can tell. She said cheetah print, and best of all, the strap. That is nice. That lucky strap. Because these things, you know, you fill it up and it's it's fairly heavy. You gotta carry this around all day, or you know, you're going back and forth to the office. You're walking on the street, doesn't fit in your bag. Well, with the strap, you can just loop it around your body, carry it wherever you want to go, so you're always staying hydrated. They have over 50 different combinations to pick from, so you really got to design your own. We love ours. We always have ours in the office with us. You can use the discount code Chicks in the Off to get 10% off your order today. Hydro Jugs are game changers for anyone on the go. So once again, use code Chicks in the Off at the Hydro Jug dot com slash discount slash Chicks in the Office. Oh, excuse me, slash Chicks in the Off. To get 10% off today and start hydrating. That's one more time. Thehydrojug.com slash discount slash chicks in the off to get 10% off your order. Let's talk about Bachelor in Paradise. Let's do it. Guys, I'm going to put this down because once again, I feel like sometimes I block. Blocks my vision directly to Rhea's beautiful face. Oh, you're beautiful. Yeah. Trent, you're beautiful too. We're all beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you too. Yep, thumbs up. Thumbs All up. right, we had a great episode. Three hours went on for a long time, but we did get a lot out of it. The first hour was pretty much totally around this Ivan situation. We picked up right where we left off with Ivan and Aaron still fighting. And immediately, Ivan is doubling down to everyone that Chelsea is the one who asked him to talk. It was not him. He wasn't doing anything wrong. I, he talked to Aaron. He said he wasn't going to pull anyone, and he didn't because Chelsea's the one that came up to him to talk, and that's how it went down. And then they played a nice little dramatic flashback where we very clearly see that it was Ivan who asked Chelsea to go chat. So Tough. 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 Yeah, because I always want to be anti-Aaron. I, I haven't liked him for a long time since his original season. And but Ivan put me in a tough spot because he was telling everyone on the beach, like you're saying, no, Chelsea pulled me. She wanted to talk to me, not for some reason, not thinking that Chelsea was eventually going to come back from wherever she was being interviewed or whatever, missing all of the drama. And then that happened when Chelsea came back. She was like, no, he asked to talk to me. And the whole thing fell apart. And Aaron came out looking like the good guy, unfortunately. But he was in this instance. Yeah, unfortunately, Ivan didn't really have the best run here. We thought last week when Ivan tweeted about how he wanted to get on a podcast and and talk about what's happening, and uh, we liked Ivan. You know, I, I don't not like Ivan after this. I don't think he did anything I think really he just wrong. Got, you know, I think he, got he just got caught mixed. with his hand in the cookie jar. Yeah, that's yep. it. And I think well, at the end of the day, like, is this the worst thing that could have happened? No, no. no. I don't. I don't really think anybody on the beach even really cares that this happened. Don't worry, Riley's going to hold him accountable. That's yeah. we can we can count on that. But I it, would not want to break the rules around Riley. No, no. like I I no. wouldn't want to do anything out of the ordinary no. around Riley because I feel like I'm going to get in, in big trouble. Riley yeah. is not breaking rules. No, Riley is certainly not breaking rules. Um, what was Riley also, likes rules more than you do? Yeah, I, I, he definitely does. Riley's a lawyer, is he not? I like, believe so, I, yeah. yeah. So he really his likes career rules. He is, loves the law. I didn't yeah, call exactly. them laws. Yeah, he yeah. loves the rules and the laws. <laughs> and the laws. 100% Fuck he that. is following the law. Um, it was interesting because this all went down and Chelsea wasn't there. I don't know if that was a coincidence. Probably not. I feel like like the whole fight, not even fight, but Ivan and Aaron getting in, in each other's faces and having a bro off. Chelsea missed <laughs> all of it and Bro. then missed... He, she missed like Ivan and and Riley kind of yelling at Aaron, and I do appreciate Riley Riley because you know Ivan is his friend and he definitely went to bat for him. But you you could tell like at the end Riley's like, oh man, like I'm always gonna have his back, but it'd be great if he didn't fucking lie. <laughs> like it's I true. don't know. That's yeah. the, that's the worst when your friend does something and, and, and you just can't. Riley got a, like aggressive. Yeah, like. You just can't agree what they did, but you you're also their friend, so you're like, right. "Well, how mad am I going to get at you?" Right. Yeah. Riley seemed pretty mad. Riley did yeah. seem mad. Um and Aaron too. Aaron constantly like this like aggressiveness towards the guys, and I think it was Ivan who had said 
you just i forget exactly what he said but he said like you just keep fighting all the guys <laughs> like stop picking fights with all the guys it just keeps happening so that went on and everyone seemed to agree like oh, okay well you know aaron's overreacting uh, chelsea wanted to talk to ivan and then when chelsea finally comes back from for, from wherever the hell she was this entire time she's like oh wait no i i ivan asked me to talk she tells that to aaron as well and and then when when ivan and chelsea talk about it, he was like the way he tried to get out of it was so funny he was yeah. like no Oh no, no! I just said like you know we had talked before, and, and you like, said we maybe had a connection. You, know, you just said there was maybe connections, and it, he really just dug himself in. There was no way out, right? And Chelsea is by far the most normal person on this show. Mm. Like her reactions to these things are like she's there. She likes being on the show. I, I think she enjoys it. But as soon as someone starts to do like that paradise massaging of like no, no, I didn't mean that. I meant this other thing. When I, they clearly meant the other thing, she's like okay yeah this is stupid yeah like you clearly just lied and now you're tripling down on it with me like that's just not gonna yeah. fly it did not work at all we go into the rose ceremony wells comes in says ivan we gotta talk <laughs> there's something that there's called, something that happened call to the office yeah big time call <laughs> to the office major principal vibes from wells in this moment they go sit out on the beach and it was like such a classic do you have anything you would like to tell me? Ivan's like, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I might. Have you ever had that happen to you? Like where you get in trouble, but like they either a parent or like a whatever person in charge is like, well, would you got something to say for yourself? I think it definitely happened to me when I was younger and I would always say no. Yeah. Just like, nope. Yeah. I would always Still say no. thinking I would always they say haven't no figured too, it actually. out. They're just singling me out yeah. for no reason. I'm the one who immediately like gives, gives it up and, yeah. and they're like, that wasn't even what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I just no, start naming thing. everything I did wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like that. Oh, good to know, but not what I brought you here <laughs> You're for. You're in even more trouble than we yeah. thought. <laughs> so Ivan confesses to being in the hotel during, during the evacuation, the evacuation. Yeah. they were there one night because the rest of the group is like we were there one night what could have possibly happened no one they all agreed that no one he like didn't knock on any of their doors noah was his roommate he ain't a snitch no it was like i don't know i don't know had a very <laughs> funny look on his face was just like i went to bed i don't know <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what happened I love Noah for that. Yeah. yeah. That's a class act. That's a good friend. Noah also good probably friend. like trying to not get kicked off the show. Like, oh, I too. didn't know anything. <laughs> That's that also true. But just like, you got to respect that move because yeah. anybody or not anybody else in that situation, but there's a lot of people in that situation would have been like, oh, on TV like, too. Yeah. For sure. they're, they're I heard, so, I heard some up. wrestling around. I yeah. think he right. left the room. Yeah. 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 No, like you got to be ride or die there. And that was good on Noah. Yeah. So Ivan says that in the room that, a, there was a producer's phone or he saw a producer's phone and from that he saw the room that Alexa was in from Peter's season. Alexa was on Peter's season and that Alexa was someone that Ivan was hoping was going to be on Paradise, wanted to meet her. Here we are weeks in and she has not arrived yet so he took matters into his own hands and decided to sneak over to her room and and talk to her and hang out with her for a few hours before going back. Now, obviously, production found out about this because they're addressing it during this rose ceremony. So we didn't just, like, completely sneak away. The whole thing is very fishy. It Borderline doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what actually happened, but they're trying to tell us that he was. He just saw over someone's shoulder, or the phone was laying down open, right. which nobody which does. Which no one does. No one ever especially does. Especially a bachelor producer. And if they did do it, it was on purpose. To right. Get Ivan that in I could believe. But even that, it just feels like me. I, I think that maybe even they like gave him their phones back during the evacuation, and then maybe they d he DM'd with Alexa, and that's how they do it. But they made him make up some sort of story about not. I, it's. It's too much. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the real story is, but whatever we're getting is not the real story. 
They thought the world was ending. Let's not forget the way they yeah. advertised this evacuation. Correct. Maybe True. Ivan in his head was like, this is my last chance to get some. <laughs> Maybe. I'm going in. <laughs> right. That's- I did see someone tweet about being like, oh, they spent all night out on the balcony during the hurricane that was going to wipe out paradise. <laughs> Some doesn't add up. Something does not add up with this whole thing. Yeah, what? Yeah, this. I don't buy this story for one second. I don't really get it. And I know Ivan's very much like, I hand up, I messed up, like I broke the rules, I shouldn't have done that, I, I got sneaky. And I do believe he went to go see Alexa, but at this point it's like, well, was he set up? Was this for a little added drama? Did the producers realize like, ooh, this storm isn't so bad. We just evacuated everyone. Now we got to like make something out of this. We got to get something out of this. The worst, the person I feel the worst for in this is Alexa because she straight up was like quarantining in a hotel for probably weeks. Right. uh, Meets the guy that I don't know if she had any interest in meeting him. Ivan just showed that Mm. he wanted to meet her and that ruined her chance to even come on paradise so we didn't even see her at all that's it she's not coming after this i they didn't really address that but it makes it clear that she clearly was told like oh you're not coming on the show now right and the whole ivan thing the entire saga not that big of a deal like in the grand scheme of things like they really treated it like oh ivan you really you did something horrible like this is this is bad you, I wanted, right, he wasn't in a he wasn't in a couple, he wasn't in a relationship. No. And like, he really thing, didn't do anything wrong besides you're not supposed to do that. Right, and the yeah. only other thing was like trying to get a rose from Chelsea. Which he totally was trying to do. To yeah. extend his stay. True. Because he So Alexa could then because come. Because he met Alexa. And because that was a Brendan Alexa. move. Yeah. Right. That's like it's like one percent of what Brendan and Piper did. It's it's maybe even less than right. that. But like because it lasted for like six hours. Right. So the whole thing, like I, I feel like in that moment, everyone on the beach was like, man, this is disappointing. Riley basically oh, yelled Riley. at Ivan. Riley chastised him for sure. Not that big of a deal. Yeah. In the you grand don't want to get yelled at by I your friend like that. More from you, also, bro. I don't know if this is makes me a bad friend or a good friend. I'm not really sure there's anything my friend could do that make, could make me yell at them like that. I don't. I'm not sure. I I don't know. I don't wasn't think even, to be like I'm really disappointed in you. I don't know if there's anything like that you could do that would make that me would say, say to I'm you really I'm really disappointed, disappointed in you. you. Because hmm, you know, there has to be something. I don't know. But like I not. don't know like I, as your friend, I would be like, "Well, she made that decision for a reason, and I'm just going to let her go through that and I'll support her." And also like if I'm in that situation, I'm going to do something stupid pretty soon after yes, that. And that, I don't want them to tell me that they're disappointed. That, in me. I didn't want to say that, but that's pretty much what I'm yeah, getting yeah, at. Totally. It's like I'm not going to be you disappointed start in telling you. telling people that you're disappointed in them, then uh, that opens the door for them to tell you that they're disappointed. <laughs> exactly. In you. I'm glad you said it and I did not <laughs> because that's where I was headed with that. Like yeah. aren't we supposed to just disappoint each other and we kind of sweep it under the rug? Right. Yeah. And you say like, ah. ah you if know? you make it a joke, ah, right. you shouldn't have done that. Yeah, well, we move on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, and it's certainly what Ivan did. I don't think what Riley said to him was seemed a little too much, but that's their right. friendship. So, like your like your best pal, right? If I'm Riley to Ivan, I'm like, bro, that sucks. You got caught, right? Like, I'm not yelling at him. I'm like, damn, yeah. like you got caught. That sucks. But who am I to fucking tell you you did something wrong like that? Right. Yeah, fair. Ivan is goes home. That's the end for Ivan. The rose ceremony happens. All the couples match up like we expect. Fact, Natasha gives her rose to Ed um, and Chelsea gives her rose to Aaron and Tia gives, Tia her, rose gives to her rose to James. James. Like even if you murdered somebody, I'd help you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's lay it all out there. I was going to say, throw a, throw a scenario. Murder feels like maybe you should be disappointed in me. Mur- I would definitely be disappointed, but I'd help you bury the body. But yeah, he yeah, would, yeah. you wouldn't tell and, her that and, you're disappointed. No, I wouldn't. In my head, I'd be like, damn, she fucking there killed somebody. There has to be something. Right, because, because Franz and her Nothing head thinking like, oh my related. God, I killed somebody. Like, what if I like, what if we, what if I pulled like a fucking 
Alex and Sophia and and went and, and well then and, yeah I mean yeah, has, I mean it, no 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 but that's our friendship <laughs> yeah it has to be outside of the friend of course if you did something oh, to me personally okay, okay. I'm I'm no more of the no con- I got you if I you did you. something to me personally of course I'd be pissed at okay, you okay yeah I, I was like first. either has to no be something. no I mean friend yeah. of course if you did something I'm Fran, saying if you punched Rhea in the face she'd be like what I'd be like yeah I get it no I was like where there no 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 of course if we personally did to each other, I get upset. If you're on the outside, if you did something to something else, if you fuck somebody else over, I'm on your side, baby. (laughs) I got you. I got you. I got you. That's nice. That's a ride or die. Kind of a nice moment. That's what that's called. Really nice. Um, and Riley's, you know, set still a ride or die, but just had to get that in. Yeah, no, he's they're still friends. Yeah, you gotta you gotta have some people like that out there, or else one (laughs) hundred percent, or else or it's chaos, or else it would be like this is the end. One hundred percent. Um, okay, so that means that. Damar went home, Dr. Joe went home, and Taddy Daddy Blake went home. He didn't stand a chance, I think, after he pulled that shtick with uh, Tia last week. Dr. Joe didn't stand a chance after the Brendan thing. There was no way. The amount of times that that guy said, my Brendan. That was, I wasn't here Natasha when you guys talked about that, but it was too much. Yeah, that was, that was not going to work. And... Damar, unfortunately, did not really make a connection with anyone. He had that date with Chelsea, but Chelsea clearly has stronger feelings for Aaron. And then after that, we just kind of had a lot of couple talk, right? So like a lot of it was Kenny and Mari, uh, which we'll talk about. But then there was also two new girls that came in. Uh, Anna came in and McKenna came in. Anna, we all remember... Matt season, the whole escort drama. Don't really know if she like needed to come to paradise, but she's here and she wants to meet someone. And at this point in time, there's so many established couples that everybody that she's pulling is like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not going on a date. I'm not going on a date. She goes for uh, James, which, you know, smart after she talks to some of these other yeah. guys. Thomas, she spoke to. Um, who else did she speak to? I'm going to forget. Uh, not Riley. That was Not Riley? McKenna. Oh, that was McKenna. Thomas. Ma- oh, Kenny. 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 She pulled Kenny first. Yep. Kenny, Thomas, um, James, who's, you know, with Tia, but not doesn't seem like it's that serious. So they go on a date together. And their date was once again these kinky motherfuckers <laughs> at AB, like these these producers at Bachelor in Paradise, just continue to mix sexy and food together. It's been like multiple dates in a row now. <laughs> every episode, <laughs> yeah. And we haven't got one episode. Single episode. It. Hungry and horny were the producers. Yeah, this one was human churros. Oh, yeah, so well. yeah. <laughs> That could be the name of your memoir. <laughs> what was it? Hungry and horny. <laughs> the Maria Chiffo story. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> that really would be good. But this one, I think we all like more than the what was the taco date? One hundred percent. I, I'm much more willing to cover myself in chocolate sauce and roll in some brown sugar than I am to get naked and have someone form tacos yeah. on my body and then try and eat those tacos off my body. Right. Yeah, I agree. Sugar is is the one. That's what I want. I want to roll around in sugar yep. even if it's not on a date. I just want to do that cuz sugar is so delicious. Like taco meat and sour cream? No. Yeah. No thank a you. Little chocolate sauce? Yeah. Mm. Mm. You know. Yeah. Who that like rub a little chocolate sauce on there? Yum. Getting a little Yeah, getting a little crazy. I'm sure Anna has no trouble rubbing some chocolate sauce all over james you guys know i have a lot to say right now but i'm waiting for you to say it i can't because people get upset about how sexual i'm talking lately so i'm trying to reel it in i'm just give us one one statement i would love to roll trent around as i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> thank you now we can move on that's all you need yeah. to say um yeah no they and they do they had a good date they seem like they like each other and hi uh, James like didn't really talk to Tia. It's, it seemed like there wasn't really a conversation afterwards. It just felt like maybe that was already over or it was over and we yeah. weren't going to worry about it. McKenna also came in, new person. 
What sucks for McKenna, because I don't think Anna was at that party. She definitely wasn't. No. no. McKenna was at the VIP party that Titus threw. Yes. <laughs> and I forgot about that. So she like already came into this party and met all these people and talked to them for that one night. And then only two of them went to paradise. Like the, only a few of them walked in onto the beach after that party. McKenna must have been forced to go back to the hotel and wait more days for her turn. Right? Why did she the only two, shows up for the parties? Why did the yeah? <laughs> why did the two show up? Like what? Were they weren't picked I by know, anyone? I think were producers they? Producers just decided like, hey, we're gonna send in Chelsea and uh, Alana, right? Yep. Well, they had to send in Atlanta. We knew that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> actually kind of sounds like best case scenario for McKenna because she's probably just been at a very nice hotel for two weeks that has yeah, air but, conditioning. And but you can't do anything. You can't go outside. You can't have your phone. You can't you go can't, outside? I don't think so. When they're like, when you're locked in pre-show, you're like locked in your room. No way they can go outside. Yeah. Fran and I uh, were... Just oh my in god, just in the process of, of going the amazing, amazing race. race. And we were locked in a hotel room, no joke, for seven days. We like had to I. beg for one hour of time at the pool. Yeah. Really? They yeah. gave us a schedule of when we were allowed to leave our room. Yeah. <laughs> Trent. Holy Swear shit. to like god, we, for seven we, days. And because they don't want you seeing any of the other people that are also possibly going to be on the show. Right. So like your dinner, like your dinner time is like seven to seven thirty and you have to be gone because the, there are other people who are eating from seven thirty to eight. Shifts. And like you're not supposed nope. to see each other. And yeah, it was wild. We talked to psychiatrists. We got shots. We there we had a wild seven days. Wow. I didn't Just the two of us that. locked in one room together and no balcony or like windows that you can open. No. Just all right, not that doesn't sound great if that's what and we're that's, doing. And that's, that's definitely what's happening. If that's, that's happening for the for Amazing Race, sure is what they're that's doing what's on happening on The Bachelor. 100%. Yeah. That's what McKenna had to go right back to her room. And not Remember when we the, pr the producer offered to get us in and out? Yeah. Like some shady shit like that happens. Yeah. Sounds like prison. Yeah, we yeah. were like, please. Yeah. Postmates. Like, and this guy was like, oh, well, I can get you in and like out of the room. like cigarettes and then I, for hamburgers. I was like, Ivan, I was going to do it. And then I was like, wait, I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. Whew. All right. I take it back. McKenna probably not didn't have no, a great I don't stay. Th no, yeah. I don't really think she was probably dying to get down there. When she did, nobody wanted to go on a date. She's asking all these people. Um, she asked Thomas. She asked Riley, and then Aaron, who oh. seemed interested. <laughs> this fucking and guy. McKenna comes up. She's like, Aaron, you know, you want to come on this date? He's like, Yeah, let's go talk for a second. So it's like, Yeah. Yes, <laughs> we're going well, on the date. Or... And, then in the, and then in the pre-date ask conversation, she was just pulling him aside and he was like, oh, I kind of feel like there might be something here. Yeah. And she she was like, oh, I like your smile. And he said, I like your smile too. And then she had the date card and was like, do you want to go on a date? He said, yeah, let's chat. And yeah. they went by the date and he essentially said no in the weirdest way possible. Yeah, because it wasn't even like uh, my feelings for Chelsea are so strong. No. No, it was like, I've just had a lot going on and like can't. And like, don't know what to think. And I can't be going on this date right now. So understandably, she's very upset. She's crying. Everybody's watching from up above being That's, like, she's crying. Every, yeah. Every other guy on that beach that she pulled aside and said, would you be interested in going on this date? They said no in a way that didn't make her cry. Yeah. And Aaron somehow couldn't figure that out. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That did happen. Uh, and then I don't know. I'm. I guess McKenna just initially had no interest in ed didn't want to ask on the date <laughs> but ed went down there and was like don't leave like i'll go on the date with you and she was like no nah, I'm, I'm gonna leave and he's like oh come on what are you what are you gonna do one night like you're not gonna be able to get on a flight right now anyway you might as well take the date yep and and see and have fun and see what happens and uh it did seem like it took a little bit of convincing it did but they did go on the date together that's my guy ed he's a go-getter he wants, it was very sweet, I he, thought. It was a very sweet moment. And as a as a longtime fan of Ed, it, it felt like a big payoff for me. Because, yeah, it, it was very sweet. Yeah. How do we feel about Natasha, <clears throat> though? Because N N N Natasha did give Ed her rose. That's paradise. <laughs> That's paradise, baby. Yeah. I think That's it is. It? Like, uh, this whole season, there's been a lot of talk about, like, people being wronged or whatever a lot yeah. of it stemmed from brendan and piper and in that situation they were clearly in the wrong and natasha was in the right but a situation like this where 
Ed goes to McKenna and says, hey, I would go on that date and then ends up going with her and, you know, leaving Natasha behind. That's paradise. Mm -hmm. Like you can't start getting mad at people just getting a rose from somebody else and then going on a date with some with a different person. Like that's just kind of that's the process. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't really like the picture that's being painted of like, ah, Natasha never ending up with anybody. It's like. Right, I do think everyone is a little bit more hyper aware about yes. Natasha just because of how the right. season's gone for her. So yeah. I do agree with you on that. That I think it was like, oh god, uh, uh, Natasha again. Right. Um, I do, and yeah. if it was anyone else, to be like, oh, they didn't even really know each yeah, other. It's, it's <laughs> becoming like Connor, like right. with the kissing and and right, right, he right. just down bad at yeah. week after week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just I just don't want us to get to a place with this show where just because someone gives you a rose the week before doesn't mean that you can't then like. Yeah. Go on a date with somebody else. Right, because then Paradise just wouldn't exist. That's right. Like they that's would just right. it would just be like, all right, let's have one episode, whoever you end up with, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah, like I, people get invested in these, you know, short term relationships a little bit because we like the people. We like Natasha. But if Ed wants to go on a date with McKenna, that's Paradise. Yeah. I think you guys are I think you guys are right, Ed. And I and I feel like maybe Ed had an attraction to McKenna or wanted to pursue McKenna, which is why he put himself out there like this. And they went on this date and it was rollerblading. They were just like rollerblading and disco rollerblading. It looked like a hotel. Getting Honestly, it looked fun. I like rollerblading, but um, rollerblading just reminds me of like my middle school uh, roller yeah. blading parties. Shout Floor out Rank. United Skates. Yeah. Shout out Florham Park. I cannot Floor, believe Floor I Park cannot Ranks. think. Oh, Super Skate in Cedar Rapids. Yeah. It's an old building. I think it's still there. Nobody Floral knows how it's rink. still in business. I'm hitting up United Skates. Nobody goes there. I don't know if my, the place I went to is open anymore, but God, arguably mine has the, the best name. The best. Wait, what were the names again? United was, Skates. Yeah, that's a good one. We don't like Super Skate? Yeah, but get it, United Skates. No, I got yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, yours, no, I, yeah, yours we is got the it. best. It definitely is. No, it is. definitely is. And if you guys saw like the outside, the logo's sick. Red, white, and blue? But, oh, God. I, I know. I don't think so. Feels like when a mess. When we would have those... Skate nights. Would you guys do um, skate nights? And someone would ask to hold your hand. Popping. Would you guys do uh, limbo at yours? (laughs) Oh, we did everything. Okay. Okay. Everything. <laughs> Absolutely. I felt exposed there for half a second. And then I know, and it's me. hard. Ours yeah. had, oh, it's uh, so hard. And I'm sure your yours as well had um, like arcade games. Yes. Yep. And the pizza. Oh, the pizza. Oh. The, the the open the glass pretzel guys mm. yep. and. And you go and you'd rent your skates and you you get out there. there we always did like some kind of can- there's all this candy and stuff too. I loved it. You fucking Driving. love <laughs> skate nights. Well, ours, no, it's awesome. Oh my it's god, gr- our like- skate parties were so fun. And I we had a, we had a name for it. Now I'm really like oh, so did we. Nothing better than the whole crew getting together to go to United Skates. Rollers? So great. Super skate, skate you lace party. them up, you get out there, you rip yeah. around. There's always a couple people who are way better at limbo than everybody else, and it made me angry. Also, just at rollerblading in general. Like, yeah. I'm really not a good rollerblader, so I went just for, like, the atmosphere. The social scene? Yeah, the social scene, the pizza, the arcade game. Oh, you always yeah. wanted to see, like, who was holding hands yeah. And, yeah. and whatnot, because that was, like, the biggest who was deal. Who was skating around to Brian McKnight? Yeah. <laughs> That's when you knew. You played the good songs. Because yeah, most people sure. would come off of the <laughs> yeah. off of the rink, is that what you call it? The rink. The yeah, rink, rink yes. even if it's not ice? Yeah, the okay. skate rink. The, the skate rink, yeah. They would come <laughs> off, but then like people would stay out there and it'd be the couples and uh, Brian McKnight would play. You ever out there. one of them? Yeah, of course. Come on. Nice. Come on. Sick. <laughs> I kind of want to put on some roller They're the best. Uh, the three of us which is why it's have just, a night. We should. We should. <laughs> okay. Which is why it's funny. Let's though. go to United Skates. Tentatively, we will go skating. Yes, I think that... But it, it is funny though because seeing that, seeing this as a date, like immediately made me think of that. Where I was like, "Wow, that's romance." Because I think back in middle school, it was like that was the most romantic thing you could do is to hold hands with someone on the rink. Yeah, it or was. Or go into the haunted rink. house with somebody. Yep. Yeah, that that's a good one too. That's when you knew that is a good. At one Adventureland, too. it was. If you're like, you know, becoming a thing, maybe, possibly, there's a crush there. You're going into the haunted house. Yeah. If you're a real deal couple, log flume. Woo! Yeah. Log flume. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because the log flume was, everybody rode the log flume at night because it was way sicker to do the log flume at night. For some reason, I don't know why. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Childhood is weird. It is. God, I miss it. It comes back fast. 
Yeah, yeah I don't really miss the it. The date much. for McKenna and, and Ed went well, though. I think, you know, they sat down and I was like, you had a good time, right? She's like, yeah. So it seems like, you know, maybe there was more of an attraction there than she thought, or she was just maybe more impressed with Ed than she had anticipated, I would I would say. I feel like people probably have low expectations for Ed. If yeah. If you're going on a date with him, you're like, what's this guy going to be about? Yeah. And I, he's a sweet definitely, guy. Definitely. Um, we have to talk about Kenny and Mari. They are just up, down, all around. One second they're great, and the next second they're not. They Mari was worried because he wasn't like being as physical with her, and then he was worried that, she wasn't at the same level as him. And so they were just kind of like off or something was off. And I think it was Mari who like tried to claim that she had set this up or something. But, you know, obviously that's not how this actually happened. But they had a priestess come and sit down and like perform this whole ritual for them to reconnect. And they were talking about what, you know, the reasons why they love each other and anytime like you're in a little bit of a not even necessarily a rut perhaps but like you actually have to look at the person and be like these are all the reasons why i love you it really it helps <laughs> it's like oh wow i really do love this person mm-hmm. and it did seem to help them uh, yeah i do think the the ceremony or, or whatever you want to call it i think it yeah. worked for them because like you're did. saying it was very like you know who could use that abigail and noah at right. some point along the for line sure they do something like they that. needed to be put in a situation where they were like forced to actually spit Even out just their look at each other look Even each other in the eyes look each other they're always the just eyes. laying down and sort of sleepy yeah, yeah i think uh yeah kenny and mari They've been the most confusing couple throughout this whole season, but I also think that makes them the most real couple, or at least up there with the most real couple, just because they've gone through actual, like, struggles. Yeah. Um, But yeah, like, I thought Kenny was going to go on the date with Anna when she asked him because he had told Mari right before that, like, I'm just, like, not feeling it. It's not as physical. Like, something's not there. But then they had this ceremony, and it seems like things are back on track. Um, There was a funny moment where on you know i actually think we were in the bathroom but trent this woman came in and trent was like "Ooh, a princess and i was mm-hmm. like she said priestess i thought she said princess <laughs> but trent was like oh, oh a upset princess. i missed that uh, i would have bought princess i would have believed could princess. have been a princess if, if i had been watching by myself in my apartment i yeah. would have tweeted something about like oh we got a princess we got a princess <laughs> and that's and amazing she's about to sp- just spiritually heal these two uh and make it all better the opposite of that is what you were saying, you know, before we get into into prom night was Abigail and Noah before they were talking about how all the other couples are saying they've fallen in love with each other and they're reaching these points. And Abigail's talking to Wells like, I just don't really know quite where we're at. And Wells like explained it really well. You know, he's like, I think, you know, Noah's just trying to hear back from you, wants you to express yourself, tell him how you really feel. I think you guys are really great for each other. She gets that advice and then Noah says, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm falling in love with you. And she just appears to not answer at all. She froze. Not a single word. Um, Mortifying and, for, for Noah. Yeah, it was. And it was weird, too, because like we said, and we talked about this already, but they're having these conversations and I don't know if maybe just this level of emotional intimacy is really hard for both of them. They are not looking at each other Never. in their face, like in their eyes ever. Like Bad they're time. having these serious conversations and they're, and I know it's easier because look, I have certainly been there before where I've had something very serious and scary to say to someone. And I'm like, I got to look over there while I say this. Cause I can't look them in the eyes. Right. But this is like a good thing. Like I'm, I'm falling in love with you is a good thing. So he says it, he's not looking at her. It's, you never want someone uh, to be like, I'm falling in love with you. And they're looking over here. No. Cause usually when you're looking over here, you're like, oh, I, I think we should end this. Right. But like, I'm falling in love with you. I'd be like, no, you're not. Yeah. If you're falling in love with me. You'd be looking at me in the eye. Cause yep. you love me. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So it was awkward. Isn't it weird how eye contact is such a... The person's going to hear it anyway. No matter if you're looking at them or not looking at them, they're going to hear what you're going to say. Yeah, Yeah, I wonder what that is where like you just can't look at them and they can't be looking at you. Yeah, weird. That's strange. And But no one and Abigail Abigail certainly have that problem. The whole season. Yeah. Every conversation they've had, 
Noah's been pretty much asleep, and they've been laying on those day beds just looking at the sky like, what do you think's going on in our relationship? I don't know. I hope it works out. You know, be more open with me. And it's just, yeah. it felt like, unfortunately, and I know we'll get to it at the prom, but like maybe a long time coming where they just hadn't talked enough about it. Definitely. Big night for everyone in paradise. It's the prom and it's 80s style. There were tons of prom proposals. Everybody's excited. You know, they're writing prom in the sand. There's balloons. Obviously, Joe's was the best. Don't have to don't have to tell. We are you now guys why. entering the Joe portion of the episode. We are. I've almost exhausted all my love for him tonight. <laughs> like I I put out so much love for Joe. Yeah. That by the time we got to this podcast, it's one in the morning right now. Yeah. I'm I'm a little sleepy, but I'll say this. I fucking love Joe. Yeah. Like, I love Joe. It's coming back. <laughs> I, I love Joe so much it pains me. Yeah. Like, I'm feeling, you ever get that feeling? You feel something so hard it hurts? Yeah. I'm feeling that towards grocery store Joe. She and started, Rio started to cry during Joe's promposal. Like, this, they were actually like 17 year olds going to prom. Because I've never been asked to prom. Mm. Yeah. Mainly because my school didn't allow a prom because we went to a private Catholic school and there was a whole bunch of nonsense years prior. So then they stopped doing prom. We had a thing called Senior Sundoff where we rode around on a boat in New York City. You couldn't bring a date. So I didn't have prom. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Same, same diff, but no date. Right. Never been asked to prom. Imagining grocery store Joe asking me to prom made me emotional. You know, that is really mean because there's it's just like depriving kids of a prom. It's depriving kids of a like natural at least make, thing. Like make if if something's go, going so wrong, Shamana make did some it, rules. Shamana did it right because they had the same boat party that we did, yeah. except they were allowed to bring dates and it's called Aqua Prom. Yeah. So we had the same thing as Aqua Prom except no, no dates. dates. Aqua Prom. Aqu it's a great name. I love that name. I wanted to go to Aqua Prom so bad. <laughs> so instead they just threw a bunch of single people on a boat for you guys? Yeah. And you just went around New York City? And we ran out. There is so At least it was a co-ed high school. Yeah, co yeah. but te a lot of teachers around couldn't do anything. Yeah. But of course we had the after party at somebody else's Come house. On. And we yeah. slept there. Of course we had a little sex after. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, grocery store Joe, I, I love him so very much. And Serena as well, though. I don't want people to think that I'm just going after Joe here because yeah. I'm not. I really love them as a couple. I'm yeah. rooting for them wholeheartedly. I want Kendall to go leave them alone because it seems like she's coming back. You're having back. like a big Zaxi and Tasha yes. fan moment. Like, I love, love Zaxi Zach. so much. And everyone was like, ah, oh, you love Zach. And I was like, no, I really love Zach and Tasha together, like, a lot. And yes, I also do really love Zach. <laughs> yes, I love Joe personally yes. very much. Yes. Very much. Yes. But I really love Serena. But as a couple, and, they're as, and then as a couple, I'm rooting for 100%. them so hard. They're great. Yeah. 100%. So we're headed to the prom. Everybody's in these ridiculous 80s outfits. They honestly crushed it. Uh, if you're going to do an 80s prom, you got to go all out. I'm glad they didn't like half ass it. Everybody was in the dresses and the hair and the suits and all everything. The earrings that these guys, yeah. fake earrings these guys were wearing. It was all great. And uh, it's full on. You know, the music is playing. They're dancing. Everyone's having a good time except Tia because she's there without a date. Natasha conveniently not feeling well. Um, so she's skipping the prom. <laughs> and <laughs> And Tia is just there in her like, you know... It just felt like a. Why am I forgetting Her the dress name you're of about? the movies? Grease. Sixteen Candles. Yeah, but the director who makes all those movies, Noah, you definitely know who I'm talking about. Who makes all the you know Pretty in Pink, Sixteen Candles, John? I, no, I, I, I'm Travolta. No, in no, no. Grease. no, no, no. You're you're about you're about to name John Cryer right now. Um, yeah, I, mean, uh, I know. I know what. I know the name, and it's gonna bother me that I'm and not he does just saying. Breakfast Club. Yes. I'm gonna look at that because uh, I don't know. Oh, Wells, like one of my tweets. Um, I mean, this we're is, gonna be really this is, upset. This is why. This is what happens when we record so late. Our You're looking brain for the director. Oh, John, yeah. Jesus. John, yeah. John, John Hughes. John, John Hughes. Hughes. Yeah. God damn it. Now I now I Easy. even know what we're talking about. Yes, I felt like I was watching a John Hughes movie of Tia just like being the odd man out the prom. Nobody to dance with. Aaron, of all people, decides it's up to him 
to pull Chelsea aside and I'm not Chelsea, Tia aside and use this moment to tell Tia like, hey, you know, this process coming into an end. Just, you know, got to put this all out on the table. Got you this corsage. He doesn't really say too much. Like he hands her the corsage and then they just kind of start making out like rabbits. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I got you this corsage. And yeah. then they just start going at it. It was as easy as that. Tia, easy was, as Tia that. was clearly in a vulnerable state. <laughs> right. She's alone. She's probably, you know, they, everybody's drinking at the prom. And then here comes Aaron. And they just start <laughs> going at it. I love the way you say Aaron's name yeah. in total just, disgust. Yeah. I, yeah. I've just had a, way too much of him this season. It just came out of left field. Really did not see that happening at all. Um, Chelsea's confused. Chelsea was like, I mean, I'm actually starting to have some strong feelings for him. Just felt like it did not make any sense whatsoever. But that happened. They come back and then Wells gets on stage and they did superlatives. Um, best um, kisser was of, one. Of feet. Most flirt. Oh, kisser, kisser feet. Marissa. Went to Marissa, yes. Flirt was Kenny. And then, yep. uh, you know, most, most likely, likely to, to end up together or, or live happily ever after yeah. or whatever it was, end up together in the re in real life. <laughs> um, and that went to Noah and Abigail. And the whole episode did kind of have a theme of these two being like, everybody's talking about how we're this amazing couple and I don't know if we're actually there. And it just feels like maybe there was a lot of outside pressure for them or people thinking like, oh, Noah and Abigail, they've been together from the beginning. So like they're they're totally going to, leave this thing together they're so set which is when we start to see oh excuse me skipping over obviously prom king and queen go to joe and serena of course <laughs> almost just skipped over i thought maybe we were working our way up to it no no we i, I want it i know i know but we gotta save because you know no one abigail Let's happened just... after but joe and serena that picture of A joe beautiful nearly, prom king and queen nearly took me out yeah it did it, it did. did take me out. Actually, right. I fell over. There's a picture of you with that just little falling over crown on and his I head. I get it. Just added something that there aren't really words to describe. Yeah, it. that crooked crown the, and that yeah. smile of his. Yeah. What is the word to describe a word that you can't describe? Indescribable. <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> I think that's right. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It's, I think that's the like, word. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Fran, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> oh, God, I just snorted. That's the one. I really thought I had something. That's the one. <laughs> I was like, this is about to Coming be up with a new groundbreaking. Word. Yeah. Indescribable. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that uh, the the way that that Joe made you feel indescribable is indescribable. <laughs> Certainly, I can see that, and it was. They, they look great up there with the crowns. <laughs> um, they did. They really did look fantastic. We love them so much. They were our. We knew they had to win. Like if anybody else won. The fix actually, was in. I actually, for a split second, thought it might go to Riley and Marissa. I could yeah. have seen that for half a second, but Joe and Serena, they are, they're the couple of paradise yeah, right now. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and then that is when, the, you know, the episode is ending and we see Noah pull Abigail and basically tell her, you know, I've had some doubts and I worked myself up to, to this point thinking like I really want to make it work for you work with you but like is the relate like is are my feelings really like that strong or is it just because you know you're such a great person and I want to like you like I want to love you and I know like I love you as a person but like am I in love with you doesn't seem like it and then he hit her with I just don't think you're my person which oh. It's a lot. Is hard. So that's I, like s mean. Mean? And that's not mean. That that's I, the one issue I'm having with you about this whole situation. Because I, I get we. I, we talk I just about think there's a sense. way to break up with her without using the phrase. I just don't think you're my person. But I think that is like the most. 
<sighs> kind of respectful way to go about it being like I love you as a person on I think you're great I think yeah. all the quality you're not a bad person at all all the qualities about you are right. awesome I guess there's no but easy you way are to say not it. for me right it's like what else is he gonna say oh like I'm just not in love with you so and I, that's right. meaner. All, they all hurt <laughs> they all hurt it's it feels the most honest unfortunately yes. yeah in it does suck because you know we did see literally the night before Noah say like I am falling in love with you and you know there was no response there so maybe that influenced this but rightfully so Abigail is like well what happened between then and now and if you have had those feelings like why did you say that to me or like why didn't you bring this up earlier because now I'm she, she had said she was feeling really blindsided and it just he was very emotional he did seem upset about it abigail also upset about it and i don't know it did feel like it did feel like this is maybe where that relationship was headed just because there were so many times this season that one of them or both of them were like i don't really know what the other person's thinking and we're not communicating that well and Communication is key. No communication, your relationship's gonna fail. I agree. I, I think the signs were there. Yeah. And if they really wanted to get where they thought they were going to go, they had to have those conversations along yeah. the way. Instead of having it bubble up and then every once in a while being like, Oh, I really like you. Yeah, you know, yeah. we should try should we try to keep doing this or should we not? Yeah, let's keep doing it. Those aren't like real conversations. Those are just like band aids on a bigger problem. So it all boils up to the top by the end and then <clears throat> Noah says, I'm falling in love with you, gets nothing, probably sends him into a bit of a spiral. And then he, you know, blindsides Abigail, like she said, the next night. It, it just didn't feel like it was going to work, yeah. unfortunately, because I think everybody liked them as a couple. From what we saw, it didn't really seem like they ever had that. From what we saw, they could have actually, you know, had that much of like a really deep conversation that had a lot of. Ah, meaning She's right like, Mar to like it. marissa like, and riley had this conversation yeah two weeks ago kenny and mari even too yep. i feel like have you know just hit a different level totally and joe and serena it seems like i don't know they're joe and serena seem so confident they're just gonna make it work they're like yeah you know the plan is beginning of our relationship we just we go back and forth we want to see each other and that's uh, we'll be good that <laughs> makes the most sense yeah <laughs> I think that um, Abigail and Noah, it was kind of just like some people you have like a real connection with or you just have a fling. Yeah. And I think for Noah and Abigail, it was like they had a little crush, a little right. fling, but they're not like totally obsessed right. with each other. And I yeah. think on paper, they probably did really think that they would work and it just wasn't quite there. I just don't really know where Abigail was at because like... How emotionally invested in it was she that cause she hasn't really voiced it. So, like, did she really, really like him and now, like, she's getting heartbroken? Or, like, did she also kind of have some doubts? We're not really sure. She did say to the camera that... She was going to say that, yeah. Right, that she was falling in love with Noah. Yeah. So, I guess that's a little bit of an inside look. But is yeah. that because Noah said it the night before? There's certainly probably part of that. Like, we yeah. never really did get a full I read I think on her feelings were there and she was just sometimes too afraid to talk to noah about them completely but we're gonna see how that totally ends next week we have the three hour finale coming up next week another three hour episode fuck yeah looks like we're gonna get a lot um it's the end here folks so we're gonna get some proposals probably some breakups and who do you think kendall's showing up again yeah who do you think go home <laughs> go home which do you think the fact that kendall's just been sitting like in the hotel they're bringing her back again crazy unbelievable. how many couples and which ones do you think end in a proposal i'm going joe and serena yep riley and marissa mm, three good three uh, yeah kenny and mari i'm going with those three i'm gonna say engaged or a proposal happens. I think Becca and Thomas are still together. Noah and Abigail seem like they're over. And the rest, eh. I don't think anybody's serious enough in the in the rest of the group. I could also weirdly see Serena and Joe not getting engaged and just like being the happiest couple in the world as they yeah. leave the beach. 
I mean, yeah, that's that is what gro- that is what I, I don't know why I'm just called him grocery store Joe. That is what Joe. What's his name? I know, but we've, we've I feel like we've that. we're past yeah. it. Joe, he's not Dr. Um, Joe. Yeah, I feel like Joe did that already. Yeah. You know, not that that's a reason why he would get engaged this time around, but it he knows that that also is an option mm-hmm. because, you know, he did it for two years after he was on the show. I think Marissa and Riley are no doubter. Yeah, they seem happening. they seem yeah. like ready. Those two are getting married. Yeah, yeah. They seem ready. The way they're talking about it, they seem super ready for this, and it does kind of feel like Kenny and Mari are very honest and open with each other, and are like keep actually talking about an engagement. So there is unfortunately usually one couple that just breaks your heart. That yeah. just completely split right at the end. Yeah. I'm trying if, to think if, of the one from the if, last couple of years. But there's always one where it's like... I mean, I think that's Abigail and Noah, but there could be another one. If I had to pick one, that would be Kenny and Mari, I think. Yeah. I think that's right. I don't really... I think that's kind of it, right? Yeah, I think so. So we will be back next week to recap the finale. We'll see who's in love, who's not, but at least the three of us are back together. That's really all that matters. Yeah, that's all we need in life. Mm-hmm.